will kill too. There are armed robbers that come to steal. They don't come to kill. They come to steal. But to steal effectively, they kill, they destroy, they lie, they manipulate, they disguise. But the goal essentially is to steal. Are we together? And of the many things, this was a revelation God gave me. Of the many things that Satan desires to steal in the life of the saints, I want to list four of them for you. You will understand why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Because all these four things reside in your heart. So when Satan steals your heart, he has stolen everything. Literally everything. Most believers think what Satan is looking to steal. Please look up. Most believers think what Satan is looking to steal is your health or your marriage or your money or your job. You're not exactly wrong, but you're not exactly right. Satan is not interested in stealing material things. It is of no value to him. Are we together? So you need to find out what Satan really wants to steal. Because as God lifts you and as you are doing business with God, Satan is always, have you seen, um, for those of you who watch Nat Joe Wild, have you seen hyenas? You know, they are arch enemies with lions. Every time an animal just suffers to kill its prey, give a few minutes, you see hyenas just roaming around. They are masters at eating something they did not kill. And they have a very, a highly organized system. They will seldom come to attack as an individual. They come in groups. So they can even overpower one lion, except the other members of the pride comes to help him. You see that now? So the Bible tells us that this man roams around. Are we together now? There are things that the moment God gives you, when Satan knows that this thing has been delivered, he is thirsty and he's hungry. He wants it too. Not for himself. He wants it out of your life. And I cannot end tonight's service without showing you these four things. Never forget them. When the Bible says Satan is a thief, among the many things he steals are these four. Essentially, number one, the first thing Satan really steals from anyone, including a believer, the first thing he really desires to steal is your passion for God and your zeal. This is the first thing and the highest thing Satan wants to steal. Jeremiah 29, 13, let's hurry up. Your zeal for God and your passion for God is really what Satan wants to steal. And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, with all your heart your heart second chronicles chapter 15 from verse 12 when you read down to 15 they enter the covenant the bible says to seek the lord god of their fathers with all their heart take note with all their heart and with all their soul verse 13 and the bible says that whosoever should not seek the god of israel should be put to death whether small or great whether man or woman 14 we're reading to 15 and they swear with a loud voice and with shouting with tumbrels and comets verse 15 all judah rejoiced at the oath they bound themselves with an oath and they swore with their heart and the bible says they sought him with their whole desire and he was found of them and the lord gave them rest round about say that after me rest round about one more time say it like you are receiving it rest round about. connected so when satan steals your passion he stole your rest he didn't just steal your passion for God. He didn't just steal your passion for the house of God. He stole your possibility for entering into rest round about. Are we learning? This is very powerful. Satan steals passion, zeal for God. You will find somebody who loves God with all his heart. And something begins to happen around his life. And the spiritual fire starts going down the thief the thief has arrived stealing your passion for the things of god stealing your passion for prayer 
your passion for the word of God and initially it will not look like it's anything serious until it starts going down and you will see it that everything has gone down the thief has come he's not interested in your money while he's stealing your passion your money can be growing so you will think you are making progress Satan would rather you be getting promotion than your passion for Jesus increases let me tell you Satan does not allow everything in your life to go down at once it will be too obvious you will cry for repentance and you will run to God so he will touch the most serious one and allow you to be distracted by the mundane things as at the time your spiritual life is going down your soul is dying promotion is happening increase is happening so you can be beguiled to think you are all right and then by the time he extracts your passion he can leave you to be enjoying the job you will die naturally like a clock without a battery hmm. what's that my song again we honor you we honor you we honor you and your passion. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, he means guard your passion and your zeal. It is better to lose money it is better to lose a job i know you will not believe it than to lose your hunger and your passion when he says guard it it means walk like a vigilante don't be carried away by the flamboyancy that happens before you clap for yourself check my heart is my passion still there like a treasure if it is there then you can rejoice over every other thing because no matter what you lose if satan cannot steal your hunger if Satan cannot steal your passion, if Satan cannot steal your zeal, then whatever he stole is only wasting his time. It will return. Are we together? For some of you here, Satan gave you promotion but stole your hunger. What shall it profit a man if he gains and loses? Who is the businessman that does that kind of transaction? It is Satan, not the bank. Satan does not just take, he gives. There are times he takes from you by giving. He presents something to you so you will drop what you have in your own hand, not knowing its value. While you are collecting things of lesser value, you drop a treasure and he picks it. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you. We honor you. champions are made in the spirit champions are made in the kingdom when they vow to protect their hunger they guard it like a military man have you seen an ADC or an orderly somebody who is really committed to his superior it's like they have an oath my life for your life but you say Satan no matter what you touch you can touch my job but not my hunger some of you need to return back this week we're dealing with matters of the kingdom and say lord restore my hunger i've been praying about job but lord i want a job but now i found out that in the process of being deceived by satan i didn't know when i dropped my hunger like a treasure and i'm now pursuing ministry i want a congregation i want influence i want a good name i want social media likes and follows and in pursuit of those things you throw away your hunger we honor you we honor you we honor you lord we honor you we oh i will give you a job but the condition is you will never call upon the name of the lord again you say but i'm desperate yes i agree i agree i agree oh beautiful so here is the job. 
your basic pay is one million naira per month two million naira per month but you will never have time to pray again you never have time to fast again and you never have time to join anybody again anything that has to do with god and he said but at least it's better in two months they give you a house they give you a car just when you want to turn back and say god but i have missed you so much they promote you again and everybody says ah but life is good with you and then you die like a fan with no light one day you just stop and where you stop is where you remain in one day like job everything you call treasure will fall like a pack of card and the thief looks at you and says credit to me i pursued you for 10 years finally i've gotten you i didn't do it in one day i stole away your passion layer after layer i started that journey in 2009 i've ended it successfully after 20 years signed the thief don't think this thief steals just in two hours and runs away he can steal years he still years 10 minutes per day 10 minutes per day you won't see what he's stealing until you look at your life and out of 20 years you've only lived two years who is learning your passion for god let me hurry up number two what does satan steal as a thief your spiritual understanding your capacity to comprehend spiritual things second to your passion the next thing satan really wants from you is your capacity to understand spiritual things oh he will pursue it he will pursue it with every zeal satan will rather stop attacking a million people and look for one person if he can find your spiritual understanding Galatians 4 and verse 1 says an heir for as long as that heir is a child he differeth not from a servant even though he be lord of all for as long as he is bankrupt of spiritual understanding let me tell you this if Satan tries to stop you from being saved and it does not work then his next assignment will be to frustrate your journey towards growth as a thief to make sure you never have access to a house a man of God materials that make for your growth since he cannot undo again you are now saved but he will make your life so inefficient you will not see the benefit of salvation spiritual understanding keep a billion naira keep your promotion keep your health keep your marriage keep your children keep your spiritual understanding tell satan choose one he will, without premeditation he will move immediately to your spiritual understanding let me tell you what happens as he drags your understanding everything he did not carry will follow him too the man has an advantage of knowledge he knows that your health your family everything is powered by your spiritual understanding it will be stupid for satan to come and just touch your finances it's a waste of time that's why most armed robbers, when they come, unfortunately, so sad, may God deliver all of them. And if they don't repent, may God punish them. Let me use the opportunity and pray that prayer now. If you are an armed robber, anywhere around the world, hearing the sound of my voice, as I make the altar call, tonight is the night of salvation for you. Yeah. You cause pain and you steal, God will punish you certainly. Are we together? But everything is powered by your spiritual understanding. Remove understanding. Your marriage will fall like a pack of cards. Your business will fall like a pack of cards. Your leadership will fall like a pack of cards. Everything is powered by understanding. So when Satan fights your passion, the next thing he's looking for is your understanding. How do you know he's stealing now? By the decline in your zeal for the word. The decline in your zeal for materials that is him he doesn't come having a horn and say i came to steal he steals subtly you didn't study the word for the last one week it's not a problem god is merciful he will forgive me that's the thief he's stealing slow by slow 
until one day the only time you open your Bible is on Sundays there's progress he's making progress until one day you open your Bible only two times in a year there's progress until one day you will say no Bibles in this house again there's progress until one day you become what you never believe you will become then he will sign again the thief I first told your passion and my next port of call was your spiritual understanding let me tell you one way he steals your spiritual understanding he makes you offended in those who serve you wisdom did you hear what I said he makes you offended in those who serve you wisdom whether it's a man of God whether somebody who mentors you you carry bitterness and anger and you don't want to listen to materials that build you again the thief it is a very effective strategy he has used when satan wants to destroy an individual he fights like we do in our world today he studies who you can run to when you are in trouble then he will make sure you have trouble with them by the time you are alone he now strikes you one day and now you can't run to anybody because the doors are closed and you find out that you just die naturally you know that's how lions hunt they isolate a prey out of the herd maybe a gazelle or whatever it is and then they just come and surround the individual and you see sometimes the mothers watch from afar as they eat up their child make up your mind in this end time that offense must die you can choose i refuse all these angered men of god around is an attack by satan because he will close the door to your receiving spiritual understanding and when that happens he comes and steals who is learning make sure somebody hears this message from you you can look at the person and say the level of your anger towards your husband and your wife the level of your anger this is an attack oh. this is not just the issue of i am annoyed satan is created he has studied that grace flows through you to somebody else and he will make something to cut off that flow of grace usually it is dishonor and once that happens he pushes you aside then he will leave you he won't strike immediately so that you are not you don't think that one morning you wake up like before and an attack comes i forbid it over anyone here in the name of jesus christ praise the name of the lord number three what does satan steal we're wrapping up the third thing that satan steals is your confidence in god and his word your faith your confidence in god the way satan steals this one is i wish i had time the third thing satan steals after he comes to steal or desires to steal is your confidence in the integrity of god's word let me tell you something i know by experience satan hates those who walk by faith he hates believers i mean not just those who have chosen to believe god satan's assignment is to use everything around your life and discredit god getting you to a point where you can say god cut this thing i'm tired you are not faithful five years no job five years no promotion you know by reason of the work i do people come and sometimes they experience all kinds of weariness and you are praying for them and they are not saying amen again and honestly it's just that they are tired father open up the doors and give them job then they will tell you see you are the seventh man of god who is praying for me seven powerful man of god the way man of god number three prayed for me i thought as i walk out my job will be waiting for me at the window well just pray i've come let me not embarrass you oh yeah here is my head and as you lay hand on that head you see the thing pushing back your anointing because the, the gates of your heart are not open satan hates it when you have confidence in god's word it is the reason why if god moves over your life and you refuse to share your testimony i'm not threatening you but you are killing someone's faith because someone's faith is depend do you know how people are blessed when they hear testimonies of what god has done you will be healing somebody it is ministry too it's not just when i come up on stage here 
That's the reason why you see that we allocate a bit of time within the constraint of time we have to hear the testimonies. And as much as sometimes we want to cut the testimonies, once the people discern that, look, this is something notable and can bring healing and plant faith, they now just give it a little stretch so that we'll hear. So someone can be reciting your own problem. That's why you find out someone is sleeping during testimony, another person is crying. Wow. So God did this. This is where I am now. Let me hear, let continue the testimony. Let me hear what happened. What did you then do? I was disappointed. I lost my job. Me too, I lost my job. Oh yeah, I'm listening. And then I went to dance around. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The person is making notes. Okay, dance around. Uh huh. And then I confessed scripture. Uh huh. And then I met apostle. I stayed there oh, till I finally saw him. Uh huh. Then I did what again? <laughs> Are we together now? So by the time, listen, by the time he's done, you just gave somebody a road map. To his own victory that's why you hear someone say i sat back there have you heard people say that that i had this testimony and i said no 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 i got angry in my spirit you can provoke one another unto godliness let me encourage you if god has done something mighty in your life don't tell lies but don't keep quiet don't keep quiet it's you are not boasting and it's not just about showing that a man of god is anointed this is what god did for me and someone there is saying, Lord, forgive me, forgive me. My situation was not half this, situ this person's situation. And yet I was almost giving up on you. I repent. Your testimony has brought deliverance for someone. Are we together? Satan fights your confidence. Let me give you two scriptures. Luke chapter 22, 31 to 32. We'll not read it, just write it. Satan always wants to fight your confidence. Hebrews 10, 38 says the just shall live by faith. Let me encourage someone here. Never give up on God. Let me say that again. To a businessman, to a parent, to someone who is at the border of discouragement. Never give up. On God Job said though he slay me yet will I trust him I assure you in the name of Jesus for some of you this year will not end until you come to stand here to give your testimony I say it to you again I believe that God sent me with this word for someone you have spent a major part of the year crying but God is saying I should tell you even now in the name of Jesus even now this year will not end until you come and stand and testify. And for some of you, what God will do will be so quick, you will be surprised. I feel stirred in my heart to speak over a mother, not just a young lady, a mother. Your concern is you are saying, God, don't leave me this way. In the name of Jesus, our mother, wherever you are, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. This year will not end until you come to stand here to testify. Please be seated. I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. I testify, I testify your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify your goodness is real. Say I will return. With my evidence say it again i will return with my evidence now let the devil hear you say i will return with my evidence may it be so for you in the name of jesus finally for tonight i'm only giving you four of the things that he steals there are eight of them but i will give you four we have to stop are you ready never forget this in order of priority what the highest thing satan desires to steal in anyone including a believer is your passion for god your zeal number one number two your capacity to comprehend spiritual things your spiritual understanding number three your confidence in god 
and the integrity of his word your faith and now number four your joy your joy <laughs> Joel 1 verse 12 let's hurry we're going to pray Joel 1 verse 12 your joy growing up in the faith I never knew that Satan was interested in joy even me I was not even interested in joy I was interested in progress I don't mind when I'm sad let me just make progress until I found out that if you lose joy huh it's like the tire of your car was removed and they say you can go imagine that someone removes the four tires of your car and says you can go here is your key may you arrive safely and then you kick that car and you are wondering why it is not moving because what moves that car you see that now that what a tire is to a car is what joy is to your victory now listen and learn the vine is dried up the fig tree languished the pomegranate tree the palm tree also and the apple tree even all the trees in the field are withered why because joy is withered away from the sons of men one last time because joy is withered away from the sons of men Isaiah 12 and verse 3 joy is withered away from the sons of men read with me as loud as you can ready one to go therefore we joy salvation is likened to a well and that what you use to draw it out you can stand at the well of salvation and yet not taste of the water that comes there because you lack joy this is how serious joy is in the spirit number three nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 i'll give you four scriptures nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 the b part it says for the joy of the lord is your strength what is your strength the joy of the lord is your strength final scripture psalm 126 and verse 6 psalm 126 and verse 6 he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless come again with 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 bringing his sheaves with him back down to verse 5 and read with me as loud as you can one two go uh-huh he never said they shall reap with joy they shall reap in an atmosphere called joy the atmosphere that prepares harvest is called joy he that wants to eat must enter the kitchen so joy is like that kitchen where the meal is prepared for you can I tell you this fight to keep your joy fight to keep your joy don't waste tears fight to keep your joy I choose to rejoice in the Lord I choose to rejoice in the God of my salvation I choose to rejoice regardless what is happening around you someone you came to church gloomy and sad broken discouraged disgruntled angry at God angry at life angry at your government angry at yourself your spouse angry at your situation your job find joy it is called the joy of the Lord joy is different from happiness it's not just a state of merriment it's a state of rest joy it is of the spirit please look at me ladies and gentlemen learn to laugh at unfavorable situations learn to laugh at unfavorable circumstances that you look at yourself and say finally i've lost this job this was not my desire but lord i give you thanks one of the greatest enhancers of joy is thanksgiving write it down the manufacturer of joy is thanksgiving that means if for any reason joy is dried up and you want joy to be resuscitated what you administer to the patient that needs joy is thanksgiving lord i thank you i thank you where would i be 
If you left me now, where would I be? If you left me now, where would I be? If you left me now. Reminisce on the goodness of God in your life so far. Forget about what he has not done. Thank him for what he has done. I'm trusting you for promotion, but thank you for a job. Are we together now? Yeah. I'm trusting you for a better car, but thank you that I even have a car. I'm trusting you for a duplex, but thank you that I have a two-bedroom flat. May be small, may not be in a very nice place, but I give you praise. Lord, I thank you that I'm not sleeping on the street. And Satan says, be angry now. You say, shame on you. I'm talking to Jesus. Don't distract our conversation. There is a love affair happening here. Don't plant any negative seed in my mind. What of the man owing you one million? Complain to God and you say, I choose to rejoice. My 10 million naira is hanging around several places and I need it right now. But Lord, I thank you that I even have money that is coming. I thank you. I went to the market, I returned back safely. A ghastly motor accident happened right in my presence and all the people died. I thank you. You see a restoration of joy. Every time Satan wants to extract joy, he magnifies what God has not done. And immediately you say, ah, but God, you serve. You have not tried for me. Where would I be if you left? The fifth thing that the devil steals are the years of men. Years, Y E A R S, time. But I will not explain that. I promise, for passion led me to add one. We'll stop there. Satan steals time, oh, he does. He does. There are people called time wasters. Time wasters. They are not evil people, they don't even know they are being programmed by Satan. They waste your years. You can be programmed by a negative information. Poor use of social media can be a time waster. Waste your years. But we're going to pray. The Bible says resist the devil. The first way to resist the devil is to be aware of what he really wants to steal. And then guard it. Beyond your money. Don't have a safe for your jewelries. And leave your heart carelessly. That a man is a, a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city that does not have walls. Let me recap on this fourth point. Number one, that Satan seeks to steal your zeal and your passion for God. Number two, your capacity to comprehend spiritual things. Call it your spiritual understanding. Number three, your confidence in God and the integrity of his word, your faith. Number four, Satan passionately seeks to steal among all other things. Give me number four. Joy. Joy. Fight to protect your joy. After service, someone, you know, steps on your feet. Oh, well, God bless you. God bless you. It was a happy service. I won't go home sad. Are you ready? Jump up on your feet and let's pray.